All right guys, project of the day, we're gonna build this great little mid-century modern stereo rack. It's just loaded with neat features. It's got thick front legs with long graceful tapers, a little bit of an under bevel cut on the solid maple top, and probably the star of the show, other than Trooper, are the side panels with these little pass-through windows. Stick around, we'll show you how. Inspiration for this stereo rack came from this heavy unit with solid hardwood panels. We also wanted to throw in a vertical element that was inspired by architecture in this case with a splash of mid-century modern thrown in for good measure. Okay, this is a really fun point in the process where we get to start laying out the panels and this is kind of a creative part of it because this is what determines what the panel will look like. So we'll start laying out boards side by side and see where the figure looks best and see if we can't come up with the, just the prettiest possible panels for the stereo rack. Once you do have the figure laid out just where you like it, go ahead and label adjacent edges with I's and O's. That'll help us for the next step at the joiner. And I don't know how much of it translates, but boy, looking at this in real life, it's, there's some incredible figure in this maple. And then when you make the final trimming pass at the joiner, put the eyes so they're facing inward towards the joiner fence and put the O edges facing away from the joiner fence. Well, with the width of these panels, it's a little bit of a challenge. Unless you have a 25 inch planer, you'll have to break those down and do it in two sections. So what we've done here is worked up 12 or 13 inch wide panels. And after the glue up, we just went ahead and planed those down to finish dimension. And then the final step will be gluing those pairs of panels together to get our final panel size. That way, when these large panels come out of the clamps, we'll only have one central seam. A little bit of sanding should take care of that. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad at all. It's useful to come up with some sort of a labeling scheme. Here I've just labeled each of the pairs of panels with either one, two, or three horizontal dashes, and then just an arrow to indicate the top face. So I think it's worth going through the trouble to dry clamp these two panels together. Make sure you're gonna get a good flush edge here. Tighten your clamps up loosely, and then use a straight edge to double check, make sure that the panel is sitting nice and flat. That looks really good here, so we're ready for our final glue up of these panels. If we did notice that the panel wanted to cup down or up, we would take the time to rejoint these mating edges. join up some of that walnut and whenever you're getting ready to joint the face of a board just sight down that edge and of course if they're very close to flat it doesn't matter which side you put down against the joiner but if you do have a concave side always try to put that concave side down towards the bed of the joiner 
double check that you don't have too much rocking and if it lays pretty flat you're ready to make those cuts. Okay, so now that we have one surface nice and flat, fresh off the joiner, flip that over and make sure to mark the unmilled surface so that you can keep track of things as we head over to the planer. Okay, we'll jump back over to the F2 and make quick work of ripping those walnut pieces to width so we can glue up panels for the sides. Okay, with the walnut panels, it's a little different approach for us. We're going to glue them up all in one continuous glue up. So we've got the four boards glued together here, all with wet glue lines. And the way we're going to handle those panels, since they're wider than our, my dog is chewing on me, hello. The way we're going to handle that, since it's wider than our planer, is we're just going to dress them down at the drum sander. If you have a Laguna 1632 uh, Supermax drum sander, why then it's pretty easy to handle wider panels. It just takes a little longer. You have to select the right grit, maybe start with an 80 grit and then work your way on down to a smoother grit and then a little random orbit sanding to finish things up. As far as the glue, uh, we're switching also to a Type Bond 3. The maple panels, we used a Type Bond 2. Um, I used Type Bond 3 for walnut, not because of the waterproof characteristics. This is gonna be an indoor piece of furniture but actually because the Type 1 3, when it dries, more closely matches the walnut color. Now, with the panels dressed out at the drum sander, we can move forward with some of the joinery. We'll break out some of this thick eight quarter walnut we have to make the four legs for the stereo rack. And the joinery will involve first cutting these parts to rough size. And then with the dado stack installed on the Fusion F2 table saw, we'll run a long groove down each piece and then cut notches to receive the shelves. Best thing to do here is to make up a scrap of the same thickness, eight quarter stock you intend to use for the legs, and we'll just make sample cuts. So the first cut is a long groove all the way full length of each leg. Blade height is half inch, and the spacing between the outer blade and the fence is also a half inch. So we'll run this test cut to have as a reference for future cuts. Just make sure that the depth of the groove matches a half inch setup block. Looks like we're good to go there. So we'll go ahead and mill this first part of the groove in all of the legs and then we'll move the fence to the side and widen that so we have a full inch to accept our side panels. Here's where that sample cut becomes so important because now we can move our fence to the side a bit, make another test cut, and take this actual piece over to our walnut side panels until that's a perfect fit. Okay, well let's see how we did with our groove size and how that matches up with the side panels. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's why we get into woodworking, to make really precise fitting joinery. Of course, if you have good machinery, you can expect a nice snug fit like that each and every time.
So the notch that we've made in our test piece and now that we've made in all of our legs represents the lowest point of the notch. What we need to do now is adjust the fence to cut the notch a little bit higher until it fits the maple panels. Okay, those wider notches work pretty good with the high-low fence on the Laguna. The next notch we need to make is at the top of the legs and for that we'll just switch to an auxiliary fence so we make sure not to mar the fence with our dado blade. If you want to see the details on how to make these custom clamps for your own auxiliary fence for a fusion table saw, check out my blog on the topic. You'll find that in the description box below. So we got our notches cut, those came out really well, and they're starting to make some interesting looking leg components. You can see how we have enough width on this side of the leg to make that eventual taper. They'll be wider at the bottom and taper to just two inches at the top versus three inches at the bottom. So let's take a look and see how that notch fit came out. We should just be able to slide that leg right over the maple panels and Look at that, just a nice snug fit without any glue yet. So we know we're gonna have a nice sturdy stereo rack when this thing comes together. All right guys, that'll about do it for part one in this video series. In part two, look for really interesting details on the walnut side panels that have a vertical fluted or louvered look and then a routed detail that actually lets you see through slightly into the cabinet and yet obscures any wires that you might have for your stereo rack. Stick around for part two.